Hi, my name is Perseverance Shikide, and I'm going to do a video uh, together with my group, Group 1, on buffer overflow and SQL injection attacks. Um, this is, is being done for an assignment for MSC BDA 610. The other members of the group are Andrew Banda, Joshua Zombe, Sponile Wokonya, Yvonne Mare, and Varezo Munemo. I will start off by doing the buffer overflow attacks. So essentially, as the name says, with buffer overflow attacks, you are overflowing, or you have overflowing of the buffer, or pretty much overloading of, of a buffer. It's defined as when a program or process attempts to write more data to a fixed length block of memory or buffer than the buffer can hold. So usually, buffers will be able to hold a defined amount of data and then so any extra will then overwrite data values that are in memory addresses adjacent to the destination buffer so when that happens when we override the adjacent uh, memory cells it then allows an attacker to control or crash uh, a process or even modify the internal variables. So for how uh, buffer outflow attacks work, I'll leave this to Swongil. Over to you, Swongil. Okay, so I'm going to talk about how the buffer overflow attack works. So how it works is that it is initiated by a malicious actor or a hacker. And what the hacker does is that they send carefully crafted input, which is referred to as a binary code to a program. And then when the program receives this uh, binary code uh, input, it attempts to store it in a buffer that isn't large enough to contain the input. So if the excess data is then written to the adjacent memory, it overrides any data that is already there. So we can see here from the example, uh or the picture that is given on this diagram that the buffer is here and this is the normal layout right so after um the the buffers the uh, the buffer overflow attack you can see that this show code then takes uh, some space in the buffer so um that results in uh some of the data that uh, was there to then move to the return address which is here but because it is the hacker that is uh, initiated this you can see that the hacker or the attacker can set new values to point uh, to an address of their choosing which is different from the return address that would be originally be in the memory layout uh, that we showed in the previous slide so the attacker usually sets the new values to a location where the um, ex where the exploit payload is positioned this changes or alters the whole process um, execution path and transfers control to the attacker's malicious code for example suppose um, a program is waiting for users to enter their name and because the, um, it is designed to accept that um, input from the users it has enough memory or size for those names that are going to be entered but rather than entering the name the hacker then enters this um, executable command or arbitrary code or show code that exists that exceeds the stake size so that would then uh, result in overflow of the stake right so the command is usually something short for example in linux environment the command is typically um, exsh which tells the system to open a command prompt window known as a ritual in linux circles so the attacker must specify a return address that points to a malicious command so that uh, return address the one that gives the attacker the control when we are talking about um an overflow um in a buffer overflow attack so without specifying the return address that they want the data to go to or to reside the attacker won't get the full uh, control of the of the data because the data would then just uh, move from the buffer into the return address that is originally there so the program partially crashes 
um, because the stake overflowed and when it then tries to recover by going to the return address it won't be able to go there because now the hacker has specified a different address so the hacker must know the address that they want to input or they want to use in order for them to gain control of the of the buffer or the data that is in the buffer so that's typically how it works good evening my name is joshua zombie i'm here to present on uh, on the languages which are vulnerable to buffer overflow attacks and there are types of buffer, buffer overflow attacks okay uh first thing first uh programming languages like c and c plus plus have no protection against accessing or overwriting data in any part of the their memory as a result they are vulnerable to buffer overload attacks uh bad, bad actors can perform direct memory manipulation uh, with common programming constructs modern programming languages like c c c -H, java and Creole, uh, reduce the chance of uh, coding errors creating buffer overflow vulnerabilities. Nevertheless, buffer overflows can happen in any programming environment where direct memory manipulation is allowed, uh, whether through flows in the program, compiler, runtime, runtime libraries, or features of the language itself. Uh, however, one of the best ways to, to prevent uh, exploitation of buffer overflow vulnerabilities is to detect uh the eliminate is to detect and eliminate them from the source code uh, before the software is to is put to use usually by performing some sort of uh, static analysis analysis on either the source code or, or on the compiled binaries and then we move on to types of uh types of uh types of buffer, buffer outflow attacks. Uh, we are going to start with, uh, with stake-based buffer overflow or stake buffer overrun attack. Okay, uh, in this case, the, the stake holds data in a last in first out structure. It is a continuous memory used uh, to organize data associated with function calls, including function parameters, function local variables, and management information such as frame and instruction pointers. Uh, normally, normally uh, the stake is empty until the targeted program is, uh, requires user input, like a username or password. At that point, the program writes a retained memory, writes a retained memory address to the stake, and then the user's input is placed on top of it. When the stake is processed, the user's input gets sent to the retained address specified by the program. However, the stake is a finite size. Uh, the programmer who develops the code must reserve a specific amount of space uh, for the stake. If the user's input is longer than the amount of space reserved for it within the stake, and the program does not verify that the input will fit, then the stake will overflow. This, is, uh, this in itself isn't a huge problem, but it becomes a huge security hole when it is combined with malicious input. Uh, we move on to the next type, which is the heap based buffer overflow attack. Uh, on this one, the heap is a memory structure used to manage dynamic memory. Programmers often use uh, the heap to allocate memory whose size is not known at compiled time, where the amount of memory required is too large to fit on the stake of the memory. Is, uh, is intended to be used across function code. Heap based attacks flood the memory space reserved for the program or process. Also, heap based, heap -based vulnerabilities like, to, like the zero day bug discovered in Google Chrome earlier this year are difficult to exploit. So they are, they are rare than uh, state attacks. Uh, we then move on to the next, to the data uh, overflow attack, which is, which is the integer overflow attack. Most programming languages define maximum sizes for integers. When those sizes are exceeded, the result may cause an error or it may retain an incorrect result within the integer length limit. 
an integer overflow attack, okay, uh, when an integer is used in an arithmetic operation, and the result of the calculation is a value in excess of the maximum size of the integer. For example, eight bits of memory are required to store the number 192. If the process adds 64 to this number, the answer 256 will not fit in the allocated memory as it requires nine bits. Uh, we we'll move on to the fourth uh, attack, which is the format strings attack. On this one, uh, attackers change the way an application flows by misusing string formatting library functions like printf and sprintf to access manipulate other memory spaces. And then the last, <coughs> the last uh, overflow attack is the Unicode overflow attack. <coughs> these, at these attacks exploit the greater memory required to store a string in Unicode format than in American standard code for information interchange. Uh, SSCII characters. They can be used against programs that are expected that are, that are expecting all input to be SSCII characters. Oh, that's all from me. Thank you. A good day to you all. I'm Yvonne Mare. I'm going to take you through SQA injection attacks. To begin with the definition. SQA injection attack consists of the insertion or injection of a SQA query via the input data from the client to the application attack that utilizes weakness in input validation by running uninformed commands in the database. This is whereby uh, a web security vulnerability allows an attacker to interfere with the queries that application makes a database. So an attacker may view data and be able to retrieve data in the database. So a successful SQ injection exploit can read sensitive data from the database, modify database, that is through the use of insert update or delete function and execute administration operations of the database. So using the instead and update or delete functions in an SQL query, an attacker will be able to, to access unauthorized information and sensitive information, which are passwords, uh, personal information, or credit cards. Good day, everyone. My name is Andrew Banda and I'm going to present on threat modeling in SQL injection attacks. The SQL injection attacks vulnerability is extremely widespread and poses a serious security threat to web applications with built-in access to databases. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, it is very common with uh, PHP and A ASP applications uh, due to, to the prevalence of older functional interfaces. So there is need for, for web developers to use some other, other interfaces available that are more prevalent, that are, more, that are not easily uh, uh, exploited by SQL injections. SQL injection attacks allow attackers to spoof identity timber with existing data data cause repudiation cause repudiation issues such as voiding transaction or changing balances allow the complete disclosure of all data of the system destroy the data and make it otherwise unavailable and become administrators of the databases so here we can see that uh, sql injections are very very dangerous to to website web web uh, web applications so there is need to to develop strategies that can uh, stop uh, SQL injections or make uh, SQL injections uh, not easily uh, exploited. We can see that uh, SQL 
We can also see that SQL uh, injection attack okay when unintended data enters a program from an untrusted uh, source and the data is used to dynamically construct a SQL query. Also, the main consequences are confidentiality since SQL databases generally hold sensitive data. Loss of confidentiality is a frequent problem with SQL injection vulnerabilities. Also, there is uh, the problem of, uh, there is also the risk uh, on authentication uh, due to poor SQL commands used to check usernames and password. It may be possible to connect to a system as another user with no previous knowledge of the password. On authorization, information is held in, in a SQL database and it may be possible to, ch to change this information through the successful exploitation of an SQL injection vulnerability. Just as it may be possible to read sensitive information, it is also possible to make changes or even delete this information with an SQL injection. So these uh, SQL injection attacks pose a, a problem on confidentiality, authentication and authorization in our web applications or any other applications that use SQL as their language uh, for, for manipulating or for manipulating data in their databases. Thank you.